Here's a question. Which website do you use to check the wind forecast? Turns out that's the wrong question to ask, as it's not about the website, but the forecast model. For the most part, wind sites use the same public models and the only difference is how the information is presented. To learn more about how forecast models work, check out this video here. Now let's jump to our top 10 forecast models and how we use them. Number 10, Global Forecast System. GFS is probably one of the most popular weather models in the world as it's used by every single wind forecast site for a simple reason, it's free. For example, the WindFinder forecast is entirely based on the GFS model, which goes out 10 days. But be careful as predictions by GFS model beyond day five decreases to an accuracy of about 50%. As the name suggests, GFS is a global model, meaning it covers the entire globe. It runs four times a day with a current resolution of 13 kilometers. This means it produces a forecast for a point in time for a square grid of 13 kilometers. By today's standards, GFS is a low resolution model, meaning it doesn't account well for regional topography. A big downside is that the GFS model output is in three hour intervals. Another thing to consider is that GFS is a synoptic model, meaning it will not forecast thermal winds on a local scale. All in all, despite its shortcomings, the GFS model remains a go-to model for long-term forecasts, but with regard to accuracy, even in the short term, it's not that good. Number nine, IFS. IFS stands for Integrated Forecast System, and it's also known as ECMWF. This is the European counterpart of the American GFS model. ECMWF is generally perceived as the most accurate global model in the world, as it has a resolution of 9 kilometers, and its accuracy remains high through day 6 out of its 10-day output. Even though it's only run twice per day, it is still considered the gold standard. Unfortunately, ECMWF is not free, and third-party websites must buy a license to display model outputs. This means most free wind forecast sites don't display ECMWF model outputs, but one that does is windy.com, which displays the model for free at three hour intervals. From our experience, we use ECMWF just like GFS for the long-term forecast, meaning we look more at general wind direction and overall pattern. Similarly to GFS, the European model does not pick up on thermal winds at our location as it's relatively a low resolution model. Number eight, ICON. ICON stands for Icosahedral Non-Hydrostatic. This model is a German global forecast model which produces a 7-day forecast with a resolution of 13 kilometers. It is run four times a day and produces a forecast with an hourly step for the first three days before lowering the resolution to three hourly intervals. It takes about an hour to run the ICON forecast on a supercomputer which produces 900 gigabytes of data per run. There's also a higher resolution European version of the ICON model calculated with a spatial average of 7 kilometers. It's updated 8 times per day, has an hourly interval, and produces a forecast for 3.5 days. You can find this model for free at winguru or vinteski.com. Before we go any further and look at regional models, we want to say that GFS, ICON, and ECMWF are the most predominant global forecast models, with the last being the gold standard. There are several more global models, such as the Canadian model and UK's unified model, but their resolution is quite low, so they are hardly of any use. Now let's get into the regional models. Number seven, NAM. NAM stands for North American Mesoscale Model, and this is our favorite synoptic forecast model. A version with three kilometers resolution covers all of continental US, parts of Canada, Mexico, and the Caribbean. There's also a lower 12 kilometer resolution version, which covers all of the Caribbean. The high resolution version produces an hourly wind forecast 36 hours into the future and up to 48 hours with three hour intervals. The model is updated four times per day. We usually view NAM 3 km forecasts on iKiteSurf, which is available for free. WindFinder Super Forecast for North America is based on NAM model and it's identical to the NAM 3 km forecast on iKiteSurf. You can also view NAM model on Windy. The biggest advantage of this model is its high resolution, meaning that the forecast is much more accurate compared to global models such as GFS or ECMWF. While the NAM model is very good at predicting synoptic winds due to low or high pressure systems, it's not very good at predicting thermal or localized winds. All in all, 3 km NAM is our go-to model for the short-term forecast. Number six, NEMS. NEMS is the European counterpart of NAM. It is a high resolution model operated by Swiss meteorologists. It offers a resolution of four kilometers with a forecast range of 72 hours with hourly slots. NEM stands for NOAA Environmental Modeling System and originally it was developed by Americans. In fact, NEMS and NAM are pretty much the same model as both use the same algorithms. NEMS forecasts are available for free at Windy. Number five, WRF. 
I hope you guys are paying attention to all these acronyms because there will be a quiz at the end. Just kidding. WRF stands for Weather Research and Forecasting Model. This model was developed over two decades ago and is being constantly updated by a community of more than 40,000 people. What's interesting about this model is that it's used by various governments, universities, and private companies, meaning that there are various localized outputs of the model depending on who runs it. For example, there's an American version which has a resolution of 5 kilometers, a European version which has a 9 kilometer resolution, and various other versions for many regions. Beware that WRF tends to overestimate the wind speeds, so usually this model's forecast is the most optimistic one. We don't just base this conclusion on our own experience, as there are at least two other studies that show WRF overestimating wind speeds by at least 10%. You can find access to the American WRF model at iKiteSurf if you're a subscriber, and the European version on WindGuru for free. Number 4. HRDPS HRDPS stands for a High Resolution Deterministic Prediction System. This is a new Canadian short-term model which covers most of North America. It's run four times per day, has a high resolution of 2.5 kilometers, and displays a forecast in an hourly time slot for the future 48 hours. This model is at least as accurate as our favorite NAM 3 kilometer model, if not more so, as from our experience it tends to predict thermal lake breezes. Another super cool feature of this model is not only does it output surface wind speeds, but also 40 meter winds, which can be useful for kite surfers who use long lines. Since we use line extensions up to 32 meters, the 40 meter wind forecast appears to be more accurate than the surface forecast from the HRDPS model. I challenge everyone who lives in the area covered by the model to give it a shot and report back what you think about the new model. HRDPS is available for free at SpotWX, WindGuru, and iGetWind. Now to the good stuff. Number three, PWG and PWE. What the following two models from Predict Wind do is quite interesting. They take initialization data from the American GFS and European ECMWF models and feed them into their own proprietary model that produces global forecasts at 50 and 8 kilometer resolutions. But it gets even better as for certain areas, PWG and PWE are calculated at a 1 kilometer resolution, meaning they are detailed enough to pick up lake breezes and thermals. For example, here's an 8 kilometer forecast for Squamish, British Columbia, and here's a 1 kilometer forecast which is detailed enough to predict inflows and outflows. Similarly, here's a NAM 3 km forecast as compared to a 1 km predict wind forecast, which is detailed enough to pick up thermal winds. Another cool feature of PWG and PWE is that it also outputs 40 meter winds. The downside of this weather model is that you have to pay for it, but it's not that expensive. Number 2. WF and WRF. This stands for Weather Flow, Weather Research, and Forecast Model. It's a proprietary model which covers selected areas of the United States and Canada with a horizontal resolution ranging from 1 to 3 kilometers. WFWRF runs four times a day for up to 40 hours into the future. It's one of our favorite models to use, as generally speaking, it is one of the most optimistic ones. It has enough resolution to pick up lake breezes and thermal enhancements, but from our experience, if there's too much cloud cover, the model overestimates the wind speed on certain directions. A cool feature of the WFWRF model is that it uses its own network of weather stations to initiate the model, meaning that it works better on a local scale. A downside is that it is a paid model, but it comes with a subscription to iKiteSurf, iWindSurf, or Sailflow. All in all, when lake breezes or thermals are possible on certain wind directions, we usually rely on this model the most. Number one, Migraterm Models HRRR for North America and Arome for Western Europe. HRRR, which stands for High Resolution Rapid Refresh, is truly a one-of-a-kind model as it features both high resolution, three kilometers, and it's updated every hour. Yes, every hour. HRRR is especially useful during severe weather such as thunderstorms. This model is relatively new as it was launched in 2014 and it's currently on its third revision. Version 4 is coming in less than a month though, so stay tuned for that. One of the disadvantages of this model is that it only goes 18 hours into the future, but on the plus side, because it's updated every hour, it is able to pick up lake breezes. Similar in nature to HRRR, the French model Arome is a small-scale, short-range forecast which was designed to predict severe events such as storms, heat waves, and intense Mediterranean precipitation. The model has an incredible resolution of 1.3 kilometers, has a forecast range of 42 hours, and it's updated five times per day. 
While we don't have any experience with the realm, we find HRRR very useful, especially before thunderstorms, as we can anticipate potential increases in wind or squalls due to incoming storms. A Roam is available at Windy for free, and HRRR is available in the premium package on iKiteSurf or for free on iGetWind. Before we conclude this video, here's some closing thoughts. It's always best to look at several models at the same time to get an accurate picture. If all the models show it's going to be windy, chances are it will be. With that said, based on our experience, certain models tend to consistently outperform others, especially when it comes to lake breezes and thermal boosts. A lot of times it has to do with the resolution of the model, as generally speaking, the higher the resolution, the more accurate the forecast for your local spot. Another thing to consider, especially if you're a kite surfer, is to use 40 meter wind forecasts when possible, as they tend to be more accurate. Now a question to you. What forecast model do you use and how is it working for you? Please let us know in the comments below and let us know what country you're in as well. One last thing, we recently launched a Patreon page and you can check the link out in the description box below. If you're interested in helping support our channel so we can continue publishing videos like this one, make sure to check that out. All right guys, thank you so much for watching. And if you haven't already, please subscribe and ring the bell. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.